So this is just a quick video, quick-ish, on how to easily migrate emails for email addresses from cPanel to Plesk. Um, you can do this with pretty much any hosting company uh, that uses cPanel, but for our purposes, I'm going to use Bluehost because I'm in the, in the process of migrating a site and domain and everything over to a combination of Namecheap plus DigitalOcean instead of you know using something like Bluehost, HostMonster, HostGator, or whatever. So um, basically, the the different tabs that you're going to need to have open or get to are your like Plesk Home tab. Um, right after you log in, this is what it should look like. Uh, in Bluehost, you're going to want to log in and go to Domains Zone Editor. And then you're also going to want to go to, and the reason I have these all open is because it's so slow to, to open this up that I just wanted to keep them open. Um, you're also going to, from the dashboard, maybe in another tab just for ease of use, go to Hosting Email in the submenu. And then from here, you'll be able to get to Webmail, which we'll get to. So, from Plesk, you're going to go to the website and domain that you need. Now, the first step is in extensions. If you haven't, in your extensions, installed the site importer yet, then you want to go ahead and do so. So you're in Plesk, you go down to extensions, over here, you're going to wait for that auto-suggest because there's a little bit of a glitch, at least right now in the version of Plesk that I'm using, where you type in, you know, site importer and it um, it, and you hit enter and or site import you hit enter and um, it wasn't popping up uh, or, or showing you know like search results related to site import so you type in site import you don't hit enter you wait for the drop down click on it now in site import you'll have like an install button that you'll be able to click I've already installed it so I'm just you know able to open it um, once this is installed when you go back to your websites and domains and you scroll down in a website card, you're going to see mail importing and then you're also going to see website importing. So what we want to work with is mail importing. I'm going to go to actually an email uh, or a website where we're doing the imports right now. So mail importing. And now you can see we have import mail messages. The other step that we have to do is in mail, make sure that we're in the right workspace. We want to go to our workspace for 2% commission, and we want to create an email address in here. So I'm going to say create info at 2%commission.com, and then I'm going to grab my password from my uh, webmail for it. 2% info at 2%, grab my password. Paste it in, and then I'm just going to hit OK. Oh, confirm password. So once this is created, then I'm going to go over to the actual um, websites and domains to the email importer. So mail importing. Make sure that I'm in the 2% commission.com web space again, import mail messages, and now I'm going to type in my email address. I'm going to type in my source password for that email address, which I have saved, so I'm just pasting it again. And then my source IMAP host, I had trouble just using mail.2%commission.com, even though that's what showed up in my DNS zone editor. So what I ended up having to do was log into the web webmail because for some reason I'm not seeing it in the email configuration anymore. You used to be able to do this in Bluehost. Um, but when you clue, like for example, I'll just show you. Oh, nice, it does still show up. Um, but you can't get to email configuration settings from email accounts. You have to either log into your webmail and then at the bottom you'll see all this automatic configuration scripts and then you'll see the manual settings which is what you want or you can get to it from email configuration and finding your right correct you know associated email account so what we're looking here is for SSL we're looking for box361.bluehost.com yours might be different and then we're looking for the 993 IMAPS server for supported ports 
So we're going back over to Plesk, and for the source IMAP host, we're, we're pasting in that box 361.bluehost.com that we found over here for the incoming server under secure SSL settings. And then we can show advanced options and just make sure it's gonna use the right source IMAP port. And you can see it uses 993 for IMAP over SSL, but we can just specify 993. So everything looks good. Existing mailbox we're importing to. This is the correct mailbox, and I'm gonna hit okay. Happens pretty quickly, depending on how much mail you have, um, but it'll redirect to this import mail messages, and it'll show you which messages it's importing. Once it's done, you'll get like a little check box and it'll tell you that it imported. Um, and that's it. Now you have your mail messages imported into Plesk. Your next step is going to be changing your zone editor settings if you're staying you know, on, if, if your registrar is the same as your cPanel account, you can change your CNAME for your IMAP pop SMTP to your new respective, what you wanted to point to for DigitalOcean um, in Plesk. And then if you're using something new like Namecheap, you wanna change your name servers, I'm assuming you have your website pushed over and everything else to ns1.digitalocean.com, ns2.digitalocean.com, and they have a third one as well. And I can just hit save. Uh -oh. Something went wrong. Custom DNS. I'm just going to refresh this page. Yeah, I got logged out. Namecheap logs you out very quickly. All right, so we're going over to, or we're in domain for 2% commission. So you want to go to your domain list when you're in your dashboard. You want to scroll down to the domain that you care about. And you go down to name servers, custom DNS. Basically what's gonna be set by default is probably the Namecheap basic DNS. If you transfer the domain over to Namecheap, it usually imports the DNS configuration conveniently from wherever it was getting imported from. Um, but we're gonna change this from Bluehost to DigitalOcean, like we just did. And this is gonna be three, two, and then uh, the user experience on Namecheap is not the best for changing configurations. As soon as you start to change something, you're gonna see this little checkbox pop up, this little you know, X for canceling. We're gonna hit the checkbox, which saves it. So it could take up to 48 hours to take effect. In my experience, it's much quicker than that, or at least it starts propagating to servers much quicker than that. You can actually see um, if you have a VPN, you can log in from different parts of the country and actually see it propagating. So if your server for DigitalOcean, you selected like New York and you live in California, then you can you know log into a VPN via server in New York and you can kind of see it propagating pretty quickly. It's pretty neat. Um, all right, that's it. Thanks.